We're here in Hollywood, California, inside the beautiful Kodak Theater. We're on the red carpet where preparations are in full force for this evening's 81st Annual Academy Awards. Why don't we check out what's happening inside? The time has come now to take you inside the main theater of the Kodak, where we're about to find out who's going to have their dreams come true. Simon Beaufoy. Uh, when the original material isn't yours, how do you turn the story and make it yours and put your stamp on it? I think you have to be very bold. Uh, and in some respects, you, you have to be uh, kind of willfully disrespectful to the material. You have to put it away, put the book away and do your own thing with it. Because I've learned over the years that the worst thing you can do is be very respectful to the material and kind of transliterate from book to screen. It's such a different medium. You, you have to take the core of it and then change everything around it and keep, I would say, if you keep the soul of it the same, then you've succeeded. But everything on the periphery will change. And I always say that to the novelist. If I'm adapting a novel, I always say, Everything will change, but I promise to keep the soul of your novel the same. And the Oscar goes to Anthony Dodd Mantle for Slumdog Millionaire. My main brief was to learn how to run with the boys, learn how to run with them at a certain height, at a certain pace, in a certain intimate way, and that was a pretty difficult brief, actually, in the slums of Mumbai. Slumdog Millionaire, Ian Tam, Richard Wright, and the full book of uh, 80 years of uh, Academy's history, no technician from India has been nominated. I am the first Indian technician to be nominated for an Oscar and winning one. So that's why I refer to it as history. And it's an absolute glory for, my, for me, myself, personally, and for my country. In 90, early 95, I finished my film school, and I decided to work doing production sound in Indian, Indian, Indian cinema. And that's the only thing that I wanted to do. So to reach here, it has taken me 13 years of doing production sound on Indian cinema. And uh, especially in a place like Bombay, being the fact that Bombay is extremely noisy, it's cacophonic, ordinary life of Bombay is so busy to do a film in its professional standard was one of the most challenging job for any sound man. Yeah. So 13 years of my work and technical skill, I had to forget for this film. For this film, I thought I wouldn't record sound for a film. I would record the soundscape of a city. Within that city, the film is evolving. That is how I recorded. Many a times, I have to think in terms of how human perception, technically, how it's that human perception has been, rec has been recreated. And with the track that I have recorded, these two gentlemen, Richard Pryke and Ian Thapp. On the mixing stage, many a times we had to uh, technically recreate the human perception, which otherwise a track which is considered to be not up to a professional standard of filmmaking, you know. So it's a whole experience of the city that's been transformed in this film. That's what we have done. I think that's what the Academy has acknowledged it. One dog millionaire, Chris Dickens. I, well, it, al it always had magic right from the beginning. You know, it was, a, it was such an interesting story. But, but yes, there, was, there, were, there were big challenges to make it, to make it sort of work cohesively. And um, it was so sort of, so many different images, different kind of storylines going on that, it, you know, in its original form, it just, it, it just felt a little lumpy and, and long and, the, the challenge was to get it to fit together really neatly and get the transitions to work, you know, seamlessly and, and also to get it down to a reasonable length because it was, you know, quite a long film to start with. So, so yes, that's amazing. A.R. Rahman, the Slumdog Millionaire.
I was excited and terrified. The last time I fell like that was during my marriage. Um, there's this uh, dialogue from the Hindi film called Mere Paas Ma Hai, which means I have nothing but I have a mother. So mother's here and <laughs> um, her blessings are there with me. I'm grateful for her to have come all the way. And I want to thank um, the Academy for being so kind, all the jury members. I want to thank um, Sam Schwartz, IDPR, all the crew of Slumdog, Mr. Gulza, Raki Balam, Plaza, my musicians in Chennai, in Mumbai, and um, I want to say something in Tamil, which says, which I normally say after every award, which is Ella program Miravanake. God is great. Thank you. A.R. Rahman and Gulzar for Jai Ho from Slumdog Millionaire. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, how do you think that your use of music is going to hopefully revolutionize the way music is used in Hollywood films from now on? Well, it depends on uh, the vision of the director and what film it is. Uh, it's worked out very well in this film because of Danny's uh, vision of music. And so it's a teamwork. And I hope if people like this kind of style, maybe I'll go further with this. Mumbai actually is rediscovering itself. There's a tradition and there's contemporary film music happening. But it's got a wealth of extraordinary musical culture. Different states have different nuances and all this stuff. In this, 0.1% is what I've used, what is available. I think there's a huge treasure there. I think music appeals when, when the film and music go together. And uh, of course, they had lovely scores in, in the movies. And I had very low expectations when I came for the Oscars. Welcome back to Your Voice. Now let's go backstage where you can have a one-on-one -on -one with your favorite stars. It's a dream is a, a dream is a dream, you know, and uh, when that dream starts to become a reality, um, the nightmare doesn't seem to kick in. And uh, I think I just, I just always knew that it was a dream. It was a fantasy that probably would never happen. And so um, it's sort of dawning on me now that I just won an Oscar. <laughs> it's only starting to sink in just uh, right now, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't have any concerns, you know. I mean, I can't be responsible for the emotional response that an audience has to any film. I don't think any actor really can. And I think going into it, I was very aware that if an audience did feel any level of sympathy for Hannah and that they felt morally compromised as a consequence, that that would be an interesting emotion for them to then deal with. But it certainly wasn't my intention to make people uh, sympathize with an SS guard. You know, that means a, a lot to myself and to everybody involved, not only in the movie, but to anybody who believes in, in equal rights for other human beings. It's pretty simple. Um, and certainly, it, uh, and what I mentioned from the stage earlier tonight, to, to, to see um, this culture of ignorance and, and that breeds this kind of hateful uh, expression that these people had the signs outside, um, essentially telling you that uh, you're less than human. Um, there's nothing more important than, than the themes that this movie, as well as addressing things that are simply, you know, entertaining, I think, but, but there's nothing more important than it. And so to be part of something like that's a privilege. And, um, you know, when you see something like what, I, what you saw, what one saw outside today, it, it, it enhances that. Yeah. Slumdog Millionaire, Christian Colson producer.
it's a, it is a love story, but it's like heavily disguised. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do a love story once before and it didn't really work, really. I think I have to heavily disguise them, really, and then I've got a chance. I mean, I loved... What I loved about his script, genuinely, is that apparently at the beginning, the spine of the story appears to be the game show. But actually what happens, and this is different to the novel, is that, of course, as you peel back the spine, there's another spine underneath, which is the love story, which is much stronger than a television show. It's much deeper and more profound and more recognizable and more lovable, more timeless than a game show, you know? And uh, I love that about it, you know? And it's a chance to get yourself lost in romance. And listen, we all want to get ourselves lost in romance if we get a chance, you know? If we can find a reason to do it and, and to dis disguise it at the same time, it's great. And, and there, was some, there was something about um, the way we made the film. We were like, we were all really loved up when we made it. We were like <laughs> a big family, and uh, it was this huge team. I mean, you saw us all on stage tonight together, and that's, uh, that makes me really, really happy, you know, that we all did it together. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's the, one of the lovely things about this evening that the Academy has, has given us is that it's a, it's a triumph for this kind of film, really. And, you know, it is independent-minded and it's working uh, against the odds, really, in a way. Um, and it's very important to keep it because, you know, it was wonderful to see... Obviously, you see Heath Ledger's work acknowledged in Dark Knight, and it is extraordinary work. But like virtually, I'm sure, everybody, Heath you know, started small as well. You start in small films, you know? Everybody does, and we've got to protect them. And the studios, and it's difficult, of course, because they're under pressure, the studios have got to protect them as well, because that's where everybody starts, and they go on. Some, of, some people go on to some things and some don't, but, you know, that's where everybody, everybody begins, you know, in those small, independent movies. And they start to learn the business, you learn your craft, you learn what you're doing, you know? So it's very, very, very important, you know. And the first film I made was, uh, you know, was a million pounds it cost. The whole film cost a million pounds. And that's where you learn your craft. And you don't know what you're doing, you know. And, and I'm a big fan of keeping it that way, that you don't know what you're doing half the time. It's really important, you know. And, and look, hey, look, I hate to be the kind of uh, number-crunching producer in the room, but uh, uh, even the studios will take note that uh, we made this for seven million pounds. It's going to cross $100 million in the, in the U.S., Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, that's good business for them. Stay tuned. When we return from this quick break, we're going to bring you with us directly onto the red carpet of the official Fox Searchlight After Party for Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> 